morning, everyone. Hope you're having an amazing day today. Let's go ahead and make sure you hear me. Please go ahead and type the number one in the comment section, the chat box, to let me know that you can. I would greatly appreciate it. And as you do, keep in mind that everything we look at today is for educational purposes only. All candidates are hypothetical. Nothing is meant to be advice or recommendations. And if you like what you see, make sure you subscribe to the various social platforms that we've got out there. Uh, not only YouTube, Facebook, Twitch, where we pro primarily broadcast this show at, but all of the various platforms. Heck, Twitter's getting ready to be a big platform, I guess, since of the, the approval of the buyout from Musk. Uh, every major name you listen to is talking about Elon did not do this to take his $250 billion of, of net worth to $251 billion. He's going to take the 440,000 subscribers that they have and boost it up into the billions of subscribers, uh, 440 million subscribers, boost it up into the billions of subscribers like a Facebook and a YouTube. So that's where his wealth grows from it. And, and I think there's going to be a lot of great things going on there. So uh, I like him as an innovator. Uh, he's definitely got musk mouth to him. But um, as an innovator, he's definitely the guy that I'd want running my company, without a doubt. If he said, Rob, I'll come and run Wealth Builders for you. Come on. <laughs> right now, baby. It's all yours. You make all decisions. I'm good with that. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning, everyone. Thanks for the ones. I do appreciate it. Uh, let's go ahead, jump in, guys, and jump right into the futures. <clears throat> all right. So the three majors, ES, YMNQ, which is the S&P, the Dow, and the NASDAQ, are all down. Uh, the Dow is down 130, the S&P is down 15, and the NASDAQ's down about 50. The RUT's down 4.5. Bitcoin's up 360. It puts it at that 40,500 level. And Ethereum's just hovering at that 300, uh, 3,000 level, down about 3 bucks. Uh, gold is up 6 and 3 quarters, and crude is up a dollar back at 99.5. And I keep saying 100's the magic number for me that I think we belong at for uh for crude right now durable goods just came in it really did not have much of an effect out there uh as we were getting started and the 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 clock was going and all of the intro stuff here today i'm looking over my shoulder at cnbc because i've got it muted and i see breaking news durable goods and i'm watching the markets like well, what breaking news nothing happened it didn't move <laughs> it did nothing right at all so uh, we've got 11 candidates on our list today's guys that we're going to look at. But what I want to go through first are the trades from yesterday. So I'm going to ask you guys to do the same thing. What trades did you do yesterday? This is the place to share them. Drop those in there. Keep, help keep building that community out. Uh, the one that I did from here yesterday was COP. Uh, we don't need an S. It's just COP, Rob. All right. So on Conoco, uh, less oil usage. We were bearish. You're looking at a bear call spread above 96 uh, or a long put uh, if you got a retest in there. Uh, I just did the spread. I like spreads on these markets, period, uh, on this, not markets. I like spreads because of the news announcement. We get a greater vol in there and a crush in that vol usually, uh, which we get to capitalize on. So I said above 96. We did the 96, 97s on the bear call spread yesterday. Uh, in our uh, hypothetical trade and 20 cents was the credit there and you were able to get out for a nickel come you know towards the end of the day so you picked up 15 cents right so great setup there uh spy is one from yesterday just with a a, a naked put right so to open the 408 for about a dollar and you can close it right at the end of the day at 15 cents so a great setup uh, on SPY. Let me actually put it up there. So it's good to see the chart and have a reference point to it. All right. So let me bring that in a little bit. All right. So we got a critical bounce on SPY off of our key level right in here. Took a little bit of heat, but it rocked into the end of the day uh, and great devaluation of that naked put. Uh, same thing. Um, you could have done a long call on SPY. But you would have been doing some of that in that lunchtime period, possibly, when you got that bounce. Or over here, could have been. Um, Home Depot was another one. Right? Home Depot had a great setup in there. Good push-up. Right? Good bounce. Right? I, I don't normally take during lunchtime. Uh, but that's exactly what we're looking for is that kind of bounce. Right? And then it just rocked from 300 to about 305. So overall, good move in there. Let's see how you guys did. Uh, John said, the SPY, who didn't love me, 
minus 25% did not pay attention to the SPX level and got all turned around. Levels were good, user error. Uh, SPX bear call spread up 40 cents in the last 30 minutes, conservative level. Okay, good, good. All right, John, all right. Uh, Paula SPY put 11%, missed the whole PM move. Okay, but 11% is not bad, so that's good. Uh, Evelyn said on paper, the SPY call up $1.62. Very nice. I love it. Uh, Robert said Alibaba, uh, bull put spread, sold for 36 cents, bought towards the end of the day for 23. So it's a 13 cent profit. I love it. Uh, let's see. Say hey, did uh, Deer spread, which was on our list yesterday, $530. SPY, $570. Did a gap throw on it, but not sure the entry was correct, but made money. Isn't it great when you don't, you're not even sure if you did it right, but you still made money on it? Better to be lucky than right, right? Or better to be lucky than good, right? Uh, that's 1100 bucks for the day, say, hey, so not bad. Uh, Sean said lost $135 on the SPX, took an overly aggressive trade, but was able to mitigate some of the loss with another more conservative trade. Okay, good, good. So at least you saw what happened there, Sean, and you were able to make adjustments to it. So that's great. And then Chris said, took the Twitter spread 30 cents in 30 minutes, 88% rate of return. Nice. Very nice. Ah, da, 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 da. I'm loving it. Good job, everybody. Good job. So let's go take a look at today's candidates. So Twitter is not on our list today. They did approve the buyout. The board approved the buyout yesterday from Musk. So uh, they're up a whopping nine cents. They're buying out at 54 in Jingle. They're only at 51.79. I will be looking this week on Thursday at diagonal spreads for this. Um, and I, I really just want a couple of days to pass. So I'm going to wait until Thursday, which is normally when I do it on Covered Call Explorer. And I'll, I'll look to make any adjustments in there and see what we can come up with. But there's some great opportunities on diagonal spreads when there's a buyout because the stock tends to go up and just tends to, tends to gravitate there. So as long as the buyout doesn't fall apart, you, you tend to be good. All right. So first one of the stocks on our list this morning is ADM. And we've got 11 candidates on our list today. So there's a bunch that we've got to get through. So everything, every candidate is earnings based today. Or all earnings based. Uh, hey, appreciate you saying that. Say, hey, congrats to all who took those trades. So thank you for that. Uh, so when we look at ADM, it got earnings. It's up three and a half dollars to ninety four and a half. So we're above that ninety three eighty three. So we'll be looking at a bow put spread below ninety four. That doesn't mean I take the trade, guys. The market could open in five minutes into the market. I don't like the candle. It hasn't uh, hasn't moved. It's flat. It's it's running. It's dropping. This is just what my first attempt is where I'm going. This is kind of the game plan. Doesn't mean I'm trading it. It just means I'm going to be looking at it. All right, CRSP crisp, right? Let's see. So CRSP also earnings are down a dollar fifty-seven right now. Uh, CRISPR Therapeutics. So if they're down a dollar fifty-seven, it's fifty-five three quarter. So they're kind of down here in the middle. They're already in a bearish bias. I like that part. The markets are down. I like that. So what's happening? Stars are aligning, right? I, I love that component of it. So what are we looking at? Bear call spread above fifty-nine. Right, like it a lot. DR Horton, DHI earnings. They're up on the morning, only 91 cents. They backed off a little bit from where they were uh, on the day. So let's see. So if they're up a dollar, we'll call it to 75. It kind of puts us right here in a neutral bias. So you could look at a bull put spread below 73. But I think this is a little aggressive. Just keep that in mind, right? Because we're more in a bearish bias and the news really hasn't driven it that much to make it anything different at this point. So would I trade direction on this one? Absolutely not. Uh, could you trade directionally on ADM uh, being up $4 at 94 and a half? Um, yeah, you could because you're above the eight moving average. So on ADM, you could also do a long call, but not my choice. I like... The credit spreads on these. I'm just trying to give you guys the options. Uh, on crisp, you could also go long put. Right? So then we go to GE. They bring good things to light. So when we look at General Electric, earnings came out. They were down $3.28. Remember, they did a stock split not that long ago. 
Where was it? Uh, it's got to be over here somewhere. So let's hit the letter U. And there we go. They were down here at about 10 bucks. They did a reverse split, brought them up to about 100, and they're down at 90 right now. So um, not a fan of the reverse split component, but their earnings have dropped them down $3.28, which puts them at 86 and a half. So just above that FIB level. So we'll be looking at a bear call spread above 92. Could you do a, credit, a, a directional trade on it? I'd need to break the 85 retest and fail. And with such a big move already under its belt, it's already moved more than its average true range just on that. So probably not for me. Corning, GLW. All right, let's bring GLW in play. Uh, they're up $2.78 on their earnings, which puts them at 37 quarter. All right, so we got above the 35.78. I don't care about the 55 in there. That just helps us with understand bias. Uh, it was a true bearish bias. It now puts us into a neutral bias. So we could look at a bull put spread below 36. All right, like that one. Monster Market Movers coming up tomorrow night. Actually, I'm MMM is uh, 3M, right? Monster Market Movers is our acronym, MMM. So right now, 3M is down 260 at 146 even. We've got 146.70, so we broke down to here. So, guys, we are down at one. We got 146.70 is resistance, right? We're at 146. We're like tiny bit below. For me to say take a bear call spread below 147, we're so tight right there. I'd like to see us either, A, move a little further down, then retest and fail, or if you're trying to take one right out of the gate, you go to the bear call spread above 151. I just don't know if you're going to get enough premium. There was a 52 and a half, which was a dollar 86 yesterday. Dollar 20. Yeah, so for a 250 spread, you'll probably get 70, 32, about 40 to 50 cents is what I'm guessing uh, in there. So yeah, if you can get above that 151. Uh, let me write the number where I can actually read it. Okay. <laughs> if you can get above the 151, I like it. If you want to wait for the retest, I'm okay with that. Uh, next is RTX. Again, also earnings there down on the day, 63 cents. So a very small move. Really not one I'm very interested in. Overall, nice bearish move. Uh, I'm sorry, bullish move to the upside. Last couple of days have proven bearish on it. Raytheon defense, right? Aerospace and all that good stuff. So I'm going to wait on this one. It's got bearish news and an overall bullish pattern. Um, I'm just going to wait. Just I don't want to fight this one. I'm going to leave it be. Uh, UPS. Have any of you heard of the potential merger with UPS, of, of where the merge is looking at? Uh, there's conversation right now with FedEx uh, to merge together, right? Guys, can you imagine FedEx and UPS being merged, right? what that would do to the company? Yeah, they're going to call the new name Fed Up because most people are with how their shipping comes in. Uh, but I'm bum bum. So UPS, where are they? They're up three dollars and thirty six cents. They're at one ninety three right now. They weren't an overall bearish bias. They're now in bearish neutral, still below that level. Uh, I'm going to wait. You could use pivots on this, but I am not real excited um, at all about the pattern. All right. All right. We've got three candidates left. What stocks do you want me to take a look at? Drop them in, folks. All right. Valero, VLO, right? Energy sector. They're up $1.15 to 102. So it puts them just above that. We get into a neutral bias there. So uh, we'll put spread below 100. All right. Uh, not a bad setup on it. Whirlpool. If nothing else, these guys got some great commercials. All right? Uh, I love the, the, the Whirlpool guy that turns into a dishwasher and all that stuff, right? Really makes you think about it. Uh, WHR, they're up $3.38 to 182 and a quarter. So 183 is our resistance right above head. 177, we're far enough away. So bull put spread below... 177. Uh, we got anything on there? 
Yeah, I mean, yesterday we had lots of premium there. Lots of premium. Wow. Let's see if it holds today after the earnings came out. Uh, and then next we've got uh, WM, which is waste management. WM is up a dollar four right now. Uh, let's get a bigger picture. So they're at 157. We've got 158 in there. Um, not my favorite candidate, but if you're looking, if you want to look at this one, I'd be looking at a bull put spread below 154. Okay. So guys, you know, there, there's something that I do, a trade setup that I do called a, um, it, it's trade with Rob is what it is, but it's called a zero line breakout, right? And Procter and Gamble is one of, so right now I'm going through my list of candidates for monster market movers. And Fibonacci is a big part of that list. I take that Fibonacci list and I analyze the candidates that are in there every single day. Um, and this Fibonacci uh, trade setup called the zero line breakout, we're there now. We're at 162.57, 161.72 is support. Guys, if we can get a small pullback today in a bounce, you got 185 and one, um, sorry, 165 and 168 as your two targets in there. Uh, this is a trade setup that does amazing. Right. It really does. Um, we're going to start getting back to doing more videos on it again, uh, hopefully to get one or two a week back out again. It's just life's been busy this first half of the year so far or third of the year so far. But guys, if you go over to Trading Like a Boss down in the very bottom right hand corner uh, is Trade with Rob. It's just free notification, guys, of what the trade is. This way you'll see it. You'll catch it. You'll know there's a trade out there because you'll be notified for it by us with a text message and or an email message so that you know, hey, this is out. So you can go watch the video, it's out the day before. So if I did it tonight, you would know about it tonight for tomorrow's potential trade setup. So make sure you go check that out. And of course, you know, register for any of the other free trainings that we've got on here that you're interested in. All right, with that, let's go ahead and see what you guys got on the docket for me today. It doesn't look like there's a lot of candidates in here. Uh, so it looks like we may have a short day and that's okay. Uh, first one is Alan said MasterCard MA. All right, so let me go ahead and drop MasterCard in here and see where they're at right now. So, MasterCard, I'm not showing any move on it yet, Alan, in, in pre market. Uh, so let's see what we're looking at here. Alan said retest of the 355 and fail. Yep, <clears throat> we're in a bearish bias. What great confluence there, Alan, right? All three major moving averages are right there. Right. So if we can fail off that 355 level, 346 is the downside target. And it's not like we haven't been there before. One, two, three, four, five days in a row we played with that line, as well as one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine days in a row here. So very doable, very viable. Right. It's just a test level for it, it seems. But, you know, if you can get that move down, that's near 10 bucks, eight bucks. It's uh, well deserved. So good setup, Alan. I like it. Uh, Darla, morning. Uh, uh, Alan, let me know if it helps in the comment section down below. O R L Y. Uh, is Darlo? So $719. O'Reilly Automotive. You know, it's like the auto zones of the world. Um, we just don't get a lot of <clears throat> good activity on these big guns. Yeah, so monthly options only. Uh, very few have, uh, there are some with open enough open interest, but very few. Uh, 68.90 by 74.90 is the bid ask spread on the 82 Delta for 20 days away with the with that open interest. Even if you went to the at the money option, it's 15 by 20. So $5 bid ask spread. Now that may be uh, conducive to the, the pre market. I don't know. Um, yuck. And it's just finding a good spot to even snap. Here's tough. Let's see. Oh, okay. Let's try that again. Oh, of course, you went too far. All right, let's pull that back a little bit and then we'll adjust it after. Okay, good enough. So, uh, Darlow, I like that it's at. Uh, it's got a little bit of a bounce going there. Uh, Pre-market, we've got nothing. If you're looking at it right now, it's in a neutral bias. So 
if you get the rollover down to 705, if you get the break and the retest of the 715, I'd look at the eight moving average, which is 720 as potential resistance. Maybe sell half the trade there, tighten up the stop. If it continues to push, you got 727 as the next upside. So I hope that helps. Uh, let me know in the comments below. Erica said uh, Roku, R-O-K-U. So let's see, four. So Erica said that the dot didn't close below the 100, thinking to wait for the retest and the fail at the 100 level. Um, yeah, I, I'm all for it. I like it. It becomes a B trade, Erica, right? Because the eight is a little bit higher up than we like it. But that doesn't mean it's not tradable, right? I do like the setup uh, out there. Keep in mind earnings. Um, my last check was the 28th. So today is the 26th. So you got two days. As long as it's a day trade, you're okay. Uh, keep your eye on fair value of the options too. Um, I hope that helps. Let me know. Paul's asking for PepsiCo. P-E-P. -E didn't make my list today, um, Paul. It didn't have enough of a move, but they did have earnings come out. It's down 19 cents. Just wasn't much there. Now, with that being said, could you do a bull put spread down below 173? Uh-huh. You could. Right, but it's at 173.55, so a little bit tight. So 173 is support, 177 is resistance on PEP. P E P. Uh, let's see. I hope that helps, Paul. Uh, John's talking about the diamonds, the IA, which is the ETF for the Dow. So diamonds, uh, current price 338.46, long and retest of the 236 fib level. 336 fib level. Uh, the point two three six. Sorry, you said the point two three six. Not sure if my fib's right. So I'm at the three eight two right now um, on mine, John. So here's my fib drawn on diamonds, right? So we're at the three thirty six twenty. If you can get that, um, that's where we're at. So right now we're just above the fifty. All the moving averages are up here. If we got a bullish move up and a retest and a bounce, yes, bullish move up to three forty four and a half. If we fail retest and drop. And right now we're down $2 to 338 and change. So if you can get a retest up near that 239 and three quarter ish area, uh, higher would be fine. And then a rollover, you're looking at 336 as your downside target. So there's a lot of opportunity on this one uh, for sure. So I hope that helps. Uh, Paul is asking for Adobe. Uh, I'm sorry, Paul. Sean is asking for Adobe. Uh, do, 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 let's see, Adobe, where are they? We don't have to worry about earnings. They're not until like June, so we're good there. But they're down $1.45 right now, bearish bias. They need a retest at the 417 level, right? Right now we're at 412 and a half, so we're kind of in that middle zone, right? Between our two fib lines or support resistance lines, we're kind of in that middle. You could use pivot points on it to trade it or a retest of, of the 417. I right, hope that helped Sean. Chris is asking for, yep, we looked at uh, Whirlpool already, Chris, and you caught, oops, we looked at that. <laughs> uh, locked and loaded, Alan said. There you go. Good, good, good. Paul is asking for SPY. All right, so SPY right now is down $2 at $4.26 and a half. Right, so we're still in that midpoint, 20 to 33 uh 13 points we don't need a fibbit there okay fibbit not required um but we definitely want to trade this one off of pivot points today paula it's in the middle of nowhere right god's country there's nothing there uh it is tuesday so we don't have an expiration today the expirations are tomorrow so you're gonna have to you know fess up and buy the option that expires tomorrow which will cost about nine bucks nine and a quarter somewhere around there uh, actually there's a 66 delta so it'll cost you about eight and a half dollars today so uh, oh, no. Yeah, on spot. Yep, on spot. Exactly. Um, so I hope that helped, Paula. Say, hey, said Alan's MasterCard looks like an A trade. There you go. Yeah, it's, it is. It's a good setup on MasterCard. Guys, you see the importance of participating, of getting involved, of dropping in candidates, of talking about the trades that you did yesterday. The whole idea about that is, say, he's looking at that, is looking at that and going, wow, that looks like an A trade. That's one that maybe I want to take today. Right. So that's the idea of sharing. You share, others share. Remember, if everybody stops sharing, then nobody shares. Right. So you definitely want to do that. 
Um, all right. Uh, do, 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 do. So Andres is asking for NVIDIA. So NVIDIA, it's always on my list. May 25th of their earnings confirmed. So we're well out in time on that. So NVDA, they're down 82 cents right now to 198. So you gotta, so Andres, you're pinned between that 200, that, um, 200 level and that 195 level. It's doable, there's just not a lot of room there. This stock moves $13 a day. So you can do that, but you gotta be cautious of whips. When you have a stock that can move that much, and it moves down to a support level, you could see that whip just snap against you in the opposite direction. So a little caution there uh, with it, but 195 is a doable number. You just got to be uh, cautious with it. You may want to check pivot points out also on it. Uh, Erica, Paul, you guys are welcome. Uh, hey, Karen. Yep, let's look at Apple for you. We just hit the spy, so that one should be good. Uh, let's see Apple. So they're down at 162 and a quarter right now, down 63 cents. So in an ideal world, Apple is in a bearish bias right now. It's not true bear, but bearish enough to take a directional trade. In an ideal world, I'd want the break, the retest of the 161 and the fail uh, as the entry. Uh, and that's because the markets are down. If the markets flip, NASDAQ flips, and we're going to move to the upside, 162 and a quarter, you can get the retest of the 161 and a quarter in the bounce. And you've got just a clear and concise entry right up to the 165. So there's a lot of opportunity here with it. It's just a matter of what the markets do in relation to it. I hope that helps. Um, Evelyn said she's looking also at SPY. And her plan is up to the 428, then down to 420. Um, all right, so 428. I don't know if that's a fibbit you've got in there. Might be. 2033, uh, but down to the 420, absolutely see it. Yep, you've got that room down to there for sure. All right, fantastic. Hey, look at that, two minutes under the gun. Sean, drop in those links again uh, for trading like a boss. Guys, go ahead and pick up that, uh, get registered for that uh, trade with Rob. It is a free update that you'll get notified for. That's all we you know send out to you is the updates for that. So, um, and then check the other trainings out on that page, all right? So it looks like it's got an opportunity to be a decent day today. There's a lot of great candidates out there. Uh, the the zero line breakout trades, I've got about 15 of them that I'm looking at for today. So all of those are good setups. And there's a ton, even from uh, my power option plays. Uh, where's my sheet from yesterday? There's a ton of power option plays stuff. Chipotle, Facebook, Goldman Sachs. I mean, there's a lot of great candidates setting up out there today. So. All right, make it a profitable day. Stay focused on the quest to becoming a great trader. Keep crushing it. And remember, you're just one trade away. Take care, everybody. I will see you. Oh, actually, no, I will not see you. We will not be doing the training tomorrow. We'll pick it back up again on Thursday. I have an appointment tomorrow morning that I cannot be here. So uh, we'll pick it back up on Thursday. So see you guys then. Take care. All right, talk soon. Bye.